We are now awaiting the next release of previously redacted court documents relating to late pedophile Jeffrey Epstein, and they could be made public at any moment. Last night's highly anticipated document dump revealed the names of some 150 people with ties to Epstein and his lover turned accomplice, Ghislaine Maxwell. Hello, everyone. This is Outnumbered. I'm Emily Campagno here with my co hosts, Kaylee McEnany and Harris Faulkner. And also joining us today, Fox News contributor and board certified physician, Dr. Nicole Sapphire, and host of the Ben Ferguson podcast and co host of Verdict with Ted Cruz podcast, Ben Ferguson. Now, these newly unveiled documents date back to a 2015 lawsuit against Ghislaine Maxwell, who is now serving a 20 year sentence for recruiting and trafficking Epstein's female victims. One of the most mentioned names in those documents was that of former President Bill Clinton. He's brought up 50 times in total, and in one instance, accuser Joanna Schoberg claims Epstein told her that Clinton, quote, likes them young, referring to girls. Former President Donald Trump is also named. Schoberg claimed that Epstein took her to Trump's casino in Atlantic City. Neither former president is accused of any wrongdoing. Schoberg also describes Britain's Prince Andrew of inappropriately groping her breasts during a picture with fellow accuser Virginia Giuffre, and she claims the prince had group sex with minors. Prince Andrew has previously denied all wrongdoing, and he settled a sexual assault case brought by Giuffre earlier last year. Harris, so much that emerged in these documents. Oh, yeah. And people were expecting quite a bit. The judge, in her statements to approve the release of these documents, sort of warned, I think, the public and said, frankly, most of this you already know. Mm -hmm. There isn't some type of huge surprise. This will simply underscore what you've already heard, what we've already had alleged in these prior court documents. But she said, and this was what I found so notable, she said, no defendant that argues that it would be public humiliation or on the grounds of professional reputation destroying, will that be grounds enough to approve remaining maintaining the names under wraps. That was not enough. Right, because how would you say that a former president can be named, but I can't? Like, well, who would you be? Mm -hmm. uh, what, what I think is specifically interesting about the developments now, Nate Foy just a few minutes ago reported that we don't even know everybody yet on this list, but they know. They know who they are. And, you know, I, I think it's contagious. I've been around Emily for a little while, so I sometimes feel like an attorney. <laughs> but um, <laughs> she's the one with all the skills. So what's, what's also critical that I notice, isn't that a way to get to people to tell you something about the others? Yes. Right? You know, maybe you can kind of keep your names under wraps if you can offer up some information. This is an investigation. This is a case, too. There were minors involved. Those people are not being unmasked. But it doesn't mean, the list doesn't say no one committed any wrongdoing a crime. It says most didn't. Now, is that most of the ones we know or most of the ones who still are on the list that we don't know? The drip drip, I would imagine, legally is useful and personally would be painful for the people on the list. That's right. And I think, Kaylee, that Harris hit the nail on the head with her drip drip comment because, to me, this is the tip of the iceberg. The whole point of this, the 150 page uh, initial lawsuit brought by Virginia Giuffre is that there is no shortage of information and horrible, credible allegations against hundreds of individuals yet to be named, yet to be discovered. So this is just one more step in probably a lengthy process. Yeah, this is a case of high profile, hubristic men who decided to prey on young women, vulnerable women. These were women, some of whom were homeless, some of whom were on drugs, many of whom had bad home lives, and so much is being made of the men and the names, but my head and my heart immediately goes to these women, Virginia Jufri, who you bring up, a minor. I was reading through her deposition and she gets to a point, they're pressing her for names and pressing her for names. You can imagine when you've been through trauma, you can't remember every name. She burned the book in which she had written down the names and she finally gets to the point where she tells the prosecutors, look, I've given you what I know right now. I'm sorry, this is very hard for me, very frustrating to go through this. I don't recall all of the people. There was a large amount of people I was sent to. Mm -hmm. Imagine Oof. being a young, vulnerable woman and you are sent to men, high profile men, many of whose names you know to be preyed upon. And just want to quickly review the miscarriage of justice in this. In 2006, Jeffrey Epstein finally was brought to a little bit of justice. But what was that justice? County jail for a few months. County jail is what he got. Finally, 
11 years later, you have a Miami Herald reporter, we should say her name, Julie K. Brown, who digs this up, does the digging, because every time she Googled sexual trafficking in Florida, his name came up. We are here today because of a reporter at the Miami Herald. Good work in bringing justice to these women. And doctor, that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about, the, the notion that as Ghislaine Maxwell, through her attorney, said, this is about men abusing women. And yet, she said, again, through her attorney, I'm the only one in jail. But I argue there's a separate level in hell for female hmm. accomplices. Because I think as women, we all know that feeling where when you see a woman, you have relief. You hear a noise behind you, you look behind, oh, it's a woman, oh, thank goodness. Oh, you're on the subway, oh, it's a woman. There, that relief, men will never understand. And for her to have utilized that and leveraged it and engaged in horrible convicted acts. To me, she is just as accountable. But to that point, now maybe we'll see some accountability for the men too. Well, and in the deposition, she they said that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell referred to herself as the mother hen of all these little <laughs> girls that were being trafficked. But I have to say, yes, the journalist played a really big part here. But this judge who is releasing this information, she is acting as a nonpartisan hero to try and bring to light the laissez-faire uh, identity that we have in the United States of sex trafficking. We have such a laissez-faire attitude that people don't even think that this is a homegrown problem. They think, oh, it's somewhere else, it's international. But no, the State Department says the United States is the top three countries in the entire world for sex trafficking. 15 to 17,000 Americans are sex trafficked every single year. And while we didn't get a lot of information from the what came out last night, not I mean, yet. it's not uncommon to see celebrities hobnobbing with rich people acting like circus performers. I mean, that's kind of what they do. But one thing that certainly got my attention, mainly because it's David Copperfield and he was my favorite childhood magician, Same. loved Same. him, saw him so many times. <laughs> but one of the questions that was asked to her was she said, you know, did you have any conversations with David Copperfield? And Copperfield, he questioned me if I were aware that girls were paid to find other girls. Now, this doesn't give wow. me a lot of information, but this should certainly prompt some more questions for David Copperfield for what he knew what was going on. Yeah. I literally had a poster of him on my wall when I was like eight. Um, ben, so much here. Yeah. What are your thoughts? I, I think there's two things that make me really angry about this is number one, the government's failure to actually investigate and go after not just Epstein, like he got the slap on the wrist, as you mentioned. That makes me angry. And it was probably because he was protecting all of these high profile people. I think the moment when people got nervous was when Epstein actually went to jail. And then when he killed himself, they're like, okay, now we're going to probably be good again. To the journalists out there, number one, like do your damn job and start digging. This story, just because it was 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 years ago, still matters very much to these victims. And the second thing is to the United States government. You need to do your job when you have a list and you don't protect high profile people because they're so high profile. You go, oh, we don't go there. We protect them. We don't challenge the authority. We protect them. The, the, the last thing I'll say is this very quickly. The, the comment that's c connected to Bill Clinton, where is the media on that really, right. really talking about that? Because if that comment was connected to Donald Trump this morning, it would have been the headline of every newspaper in America that Donald Trump liked them young. They have completely looked over this, and that is shame on the media because they're still protecting people. That's right. And while there have been no allegations of wrongdoing against President Bill Clinton or President Trump, you are absolutely right that it begs more questions. Bingo. And therefore, let's keep investigating. Coming up, how the president's Department of Justice is trying to kneecap Texas's efforts to deal with the massive surge of migrants. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.